Welcome everybody, Nadim Nasser, Master OTI Instructor. I hope you're doing great. Today's video is going to be about the two-handed backhand, which I'm very happy about because I could do a lot more and I just don't, since everybody wants serve and forehand. And some of you guys play the one-hander, but this is very, very cool. The exercise, I believe, is a real game changer for two-handed backhand players who seem to lack effortlessness, seem to lack power, seem to lack the ability to include their body a little bit more and are very arm dominant, especially their dominant arm. So for me, that would be the right hand since I'm a righty. And what we want to try to do is take away the dominant arm, take away the main arm and make our other arm, the top hand on the two-handed backhand, our dominant arm for the two-handed backhand when we play. Now there are some players who have equal um, force between two both arms so whatever you do with your arms there are some players who have the equal equal work that's done by both arms most players we find however benefit from overusing the non-dominant arm to making it the dominant arm meaning it's the main arm in the swing that makes the two-handed backhand what it's supposed to be so when we think about what we want to achieve with ground strokes we want to be able to have long hitting zones Okay, the pros can play at the level that they can play because they have long hitting zones. You don't see them coming across their body very, very often regardless of what shot they're hitting. But especially true for the uh, two-handed backhand because on a two-handed backhand, sorry, on the two-handed backhand, if you come across too fast, then your dominant arm, in my case, the right arm is just simply too involved at the expense of being able to lift from the shoulder on our dom non-dominant arm. So for me, the left arm. So what am I talking about? When we swing, right, on the two-handed backhand, and you see me swinging like I'm doing right now, it's a very short swing hitting action. You don't see a lot of arm after contact, okay? And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to lengthen out our hitting zone, and in order to do so properly, I need to be able to do more with my non-dominant side. So we've done an exercise in the past where we simply play, in my case, left-handed forehands to get an idea of how much the left arm or the non-dominant arm should really be part of the swing. But in today's video, I want to introduce a simple exercise that can help you be very conscious of how much your dominant arm, your bottom arm, in my case the right side, is really involved in the backhand versus how much it should or needs to be. So if you go just to your regular backhand grip, which should be a continental grip bevel 2 on the bottom hand for both index knuckle and heel pad and if you go to an eastern forehand grip meaning knuckle um, an index sorry index knuckle and heel pad on bevel three counting to the left for me um, what you want to do is you want to take a tennis ball into your bottom hand after you have your index knuckle and heel pad on bevel two continental and simply place that ball in the remaining fingers between index finger and your small finger and simply hold the racket that way and what you will notice is that you can't quite squeeze. You can squeeze, but you don't have to. You will quickly notice that you can swing freely and you will see that your left arm, in my case, right, is a lot more involved and which allows me to lengthen out my hitting zone significantly. Okay, so what, what I ask you to do is, first and foremost, get familiar with this. It's awkward at first, so you, in other words, you're really only holding the racket with your index finger, your thumb, and your heel pad and palm, and the other three fingers, the small finger, the ring finger, and the middle finger are entirely off the grip and on the ball, and your index finger is somewhat in between. So it's grabbing onto or resting on the handle, the grip, and on the ball. And that's where you want to be, and, and really be nice and loose. It's more about structure than it is about tension. The tension should be on a scale from one to 10, as our colleague Jeff Greenwald say, says, the looseness dial should be anywhere between three and four on a scale from one to ten and you want to make sure that you do that and then when you get to that point okay it's going to be a little bit different when you are self-feeding because self-feeding normally is different for the two-handed backhand but what I want you to do is get into the turn position or have someone hand feed the ball um, have a slow ball machine repetition set up where you can practice that with the goal of using your left arm more and your right arm less by keeping the right arm less tight on the grip so let me show you how I would practice that on my own so I have it set up as I just demonstrated and I'm going to lead I put my outside foot out, I'm going to turn and I'm going to feed the ball upwards here, put the left hand on and then swing and lengthen. Okay, the goal is to swing and lengthen and hold at the end to see, okay, have I used my left hand more, have I used my right hand more? 
depending on which side I play with, you want your otherwise non-dominant arm to do most of the work. For me, that's the left arm. So one more time, you're gonna step up and turn. See how my racket head is nice and up? I'm totally at ease here, although I'm barely holding on to the racket. I'm turning my upper body. My right arm is over here. The tip of the racket, the good indicators, it's turning back. Now I'm feeding that ball up over my hitting arm, diagonally away. Okay, that's the goal. And I want to see this a couple of times just so I make sure that the ball is sufficiently away. I don't want the ball right next to me. I don't want the ball right in front of me. So we do this one more time. Let's set up, make sure the racket is on truly continental. I feed it up, I put my left hand on, I step and I swing and I lengthen. And you will notice that when I'm done, I'm in a nice high position up here. And that tells me that I've had more left arm involvement, a longer hitting zone, and I'm easily on balance at the end of the swing. Okay, so let's do this two, three more times and then we'll call it a day and hopefully you can report back to us and let us know if this helps. So one more time here, we set out, left foot is out for me in the direction where my weight is going. I'm turning my upper body so my shoulders have turned further than my hips. I'm tossing this ball up and away, place the left hand on and then lengthen and swing out. Now it was a little bit tight here, I could tell that and you could probably see that my ball didn't land as far and as high over the net as I had wanted. So let's try this one more time. I turn, I feed up and away, down. That's a bad feed. How many of you would have caught that versus hit that, right? One more time. Make sure that, in other words, when the ball toss is no good, catch it. Up, down, and then lengthen and swing. And it should really feel like, oh my goodness, I'm really not using much of my normally dominant arm at all. And that's the goal and you will notice how much easier the swing becomes. I hope that this video helps you. I hope you can use it for you two-handers out there. Let us know what you think about the video. Hit the like button. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell to get notifications from us. We, we, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm Nadeem Nasser. Take care. Bye-bye.